what's going to happen. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in this uh, webinar. Um, this is part of the teaching program we're trying to deliver to all non-trainee orthopedic surgeons in the UK and overseas, preparing for the FRCS. I'm Firas Arnaud. I work in Bristol, and I'll be modulating this session, trying to help to organize it, and you manage all your questions um, with the help of Schwan. Uh, our guest today is Schwan. Obviously, everyone knows Schwan Hinari. He's, he works in Banbury in Oxford, and he's the cornerstone of um, our group. He's behind the educational activities that we run here. And we're very privileged he is with us. We will run the session into 30-minute uh, blocks. Um, be between each 30-minute block, we'll have five minutes break. And you have a chat option, which you can click on the bottom of the screen that will take you to the chat um, box where you can please write all your questions, any queries you have, um, you want to put forward to Schwan and we will try to answer this for you. Or if you have any other comments, any other technical problems, anything, feel free to write your question. Also raise your hand uh, if there are any issue, but best thing is to write a question. Um, that session will be recorded, so you can all view it later on if you have anything you want to listen to or see again. And also for the benefit of all other colleagues on the group. Okay, I'm not gonna make any more delays. I'll give the microphone now to Shwan to get started. Please uh, put your questions or um, comments on the chat box for me. Thank you. Okay, uh, over to you, Shwan. Thank you for us. Um, everyone, be, please be patient with us. We are uh, just learning the technology now. Uh, so, uh, so far things are go going quite well. And we're very pleased with everything and thanks to uh, uh, Firas for all of this. Um, so first of all, we're going to talk to today about uh, free body diagrams, uh, how to draw them and some princ principles behind them for your exams. Um, the uh, important, I do know that some of the guys have already had this presentation, we're trying to improve the presentation, but uh, now putting it out to the whole group as a uh, presentation now. I'm sharing my screen with you now, just bear with me one second, I'll start the presentation as a slide. Um, there we go. I hope you can all see this. So, uh, free body diagrams for the FRCS. A um, couple of things you need to know, some principles. First of all, you do need to know about Newton's laws of motion. A body in equilibrium will remain in equilibrium unless acted on by uh, external force. Number two, the sum of all forces of, on an object is equal to the mass uh, uh, multiplied that uh, by the acceleration, which is force, okay? Um, the uh, number three, for every force, there is an equal and opposite force on the body, uh, provided the body is in equilibrium. Okay. Another thing to be aware of is weight. Uh, we interchange weight with mass all the time, and you need to know that there is a difference between the two. So weight is a force. What it is is a mass by gravity, which is kilo meter per second squared. If you think about it, gravity is an accelerating force. Um, so it's F, which uh, gives you your force, which is in Newtons. Gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you're falling from a height, you're accelerating at that speed. Um, so to make life simple for us, we should uh, round this all to 10 meters per second squared. So a paid person who has 70 kilos will have an approximate weight of 70 Newtons. Do we care? No, because we're not going to use uh, mathematics in this uh, way of uh, foreign body diagrams, okay? Uh, next thing is levers, a machine designed to move objects. It has a bar and a fulcrum, and there are three classes of lever. Class one lever, the force and the load are on opposite sides of the fulcrum. Class two lever, the force is further away than the load uh, from the fulcrum. An example of that is a wheelbarrow. Um, class three levers are the force is uh, closer to the fulcrum while the load is further away, for example, in your elbow joint with your biceps or your brachioradialis. Uh, sorry, not brachialis, apologize. Um, the other thing is we're going to work with vectors. Vectors is a diagrammatic representation of force. Force has a magnitude, 
as well as direction. As you can see, see by, if you draw an arrow, that arrow indicates a magnitude and the tip of the arrow tells you the direction it's going in, okay? Shorter the arrow, the smaller the magnitude of the force. Longer the arrow, the greater the magnitude of the force. The, mo the final thing we're going to need is moments. Moments of the force is, uh, are applied in the distance from the pivot, which causes segmental rotation. Distance is, uh, this distance is called the moment arm. The distance between the force and the center of rotation is the moment arm. They cause a rotational effect called the turning moment, and the turning moment is equivalent of force by moment arm, also known as torque. If you think about it, when you're, when you're trying to screw a very tight screwdriver into your, uh, uh, tight, using a screwdriver into a tight uh, bone, if you use a bigger handle screwdriver, you, uh, you're, taking, you're increasing the distance of your force away from the center of rotation, therefore it's easier for you to turn. So this, uh, this is a di diagrammatic representation of this. A uh, moment is equal to force by perpendicular distance from the center of rotation. Do you guys notice that there's a small little blue line there, uh, kind of like a right angled uh, angle there on the drawing? That is the mathematical symbol for perpendicular angle. I'm not sure who's drawing on our screen. It's definitely not me. I apologize if uh, that's uh, interfering with what you're seeing. Um, but the distance is the green dotted line from the center of rotation and the force is the, you can, as you can see, it's got a magnitude and a direction, but the D is perpendicular to the direction of force, okay? It's a very important concept to get because a lot of textbooks misdraw that and a lot of uh, descriptions would misdraw that. Uh, we are drawing, uh, so some assumptions that you need to know when you're doing this. Uh, assumptions, uh, one is we are drawing a simplified 2D image of a complex 3D structure. We're using vectors and moments. These are the things you must say to the examiners as you start drawing. Body we draw is in equilibrium. Bones are rigid rods. Joints are frictionless simple hinges with no anatomistic muscle actions. Weight of a body is concentrated from the center of mass. Internal forces cancel each other out. Muscles act only in tension. Forces of a muscle only act through the center of mass of muscle, and the joint reaction forms is presumed to be compressive only. If you, st I know it's very hard to remember all of this, but if you start off with we're drawing simplified thing, we're using vectors and moments, um, we're our body is in equilibrium. The, usually, usually uh, it all comes to you as you're talking, so uh, don't worry about it too much. Do use moments, do use vectors, do use magnitude and direction, resolve your vectors and draw simple diagrams to simplify your, and simplify those diagrams. Don't do complex uh, multiple lines, multiple drawings, okay? Um, and change your levers to allow single muscle action. Uh, a lot of people try to do multiple uh, muscle action on a single point. So we all know the hip one, but a lot of people try to make uh, an ankle one very complicated or a finger is very complicated, unnecessary. We won't use trigonometry, we won't use complex maths, we won't be uh, drawing any anatomy, and we won't stop talking in the exam, okay? So that's our uh, diagram. I just need to turn off the sharing for a moment. Just apologize that, as I said, we're just getting used to the technology yeah. now. While Shuan is doing this, can I ask everyone to remember you have a chat option at the bottom of the screen. If you click on it, it will open the chat box. You could put your questions here. Any queries, anything that you want more to be clarified or any comments. Um, you could put them here and I will uh, bring them across to Shuan. So remember the chat option at the bottom of the screen. You click on to open the chat box. Okay, so the sharing is off yet, guys. You can see me again. Um, now we're just going to go to a different device which will allow me to draw uh, for you while we discuss all of this, okay? Uh, no, sharing is not off, is it? Um, We can see your computer share. Yeah, 
that's it. I, I appreciate that. I'm sorry. I'm just having trouble. Ah, there we are. There we are. Sorry about that. That's fine. Um, the, uh, so just going to move to a different device for sharing. You should all, now all see a whiteboard on your screens, okay? So I'm going to go back to the, the one that is most commonly asked, which is the hip, but there are variations of all of this, and it's very important to understand all of this, okay? So first of all, do not draw complex anatomy. So the best way to draw this is to draw just a simple line diagram. Okay. Okay, so that's my hip. Everyone agree that that's a right hip. There's no issues in that question there right now. So what we then do is we, I'm gonna change colors so that we have a different, what wonderful forces. And what we then do is draw W as a very small force, okay? Remember, this is a vector. So vectors have magnitude and direction. Weight is going down. We're talking in Newtons here, but don't, uh, don't stress about numbers or anything like that. I'm making a very small arrow. It's very important that you always keep your W small, the weight uh, very small. Um, then we are going to draw an abductor force, which is going to go in this direction. And you do notice it's quite large, yeah? Then I'm just gonna change the color to a light blue so we can do our moment arms. And through the center of rotation, we go perpendicular, and that's the mathematical symbol for perpendicular. Okay, and again, the same, perpendicular to the direction of force. Do you all appreciate that? Because what tends to happen is um, that if, when you read the textbooks or when people draw, they tend to do that. That is incorrect, okay? It has to be a perpendicular force and you will be caught out if you don't do this. So what I always do is I always take the smallest line and give it a alphabetical uh, designation. So the, since the force between the center of rotation is between the and the for, and the force of the abductors, I draw I write it as a small d. Then because I know actually what is the answer here, I'm just going to write, say, well, this looks like one d. Uh, the distance between center of rotation and w looks like five d. Does that make sense? So then what we then do is go f multiplied by d is equal to 5d multiplied by w. If you cancel out the d's, you have the force of the abductors is equal to five times the body weight. And then if the examiners insist on a number and say, well, the person's weight is 70, then you say it's five times 70. And if, they want to give, if you want them to give you a number, just tell them, give me a calculator. It's, you don't need mathematics for this. You don't need complex trigonometry. Now, the reason why you don't need complex trigonometry here is because what we're going to do is resolve for the force for vectors here, okay? So if we, if we draw this as a parallelogram, what we then do is draw F. Uh, let me undo that, just apologize. I'll go back to drawing this as a green line. And do you notice what I'm doing is I'm transferring this F and moving it away from there, but keeping it parallel and the same magnitude. Forgive my artistic, lack of artistic abilities, but that's what I'm doing. What I then do is I take the W and add it onto the tip of the F. Tail of the W starts on the tip of the F. And the same parallel and, uh, and the same length, okay? So if this is 5W, and this is W, because we know F is equal to 5W, isn't that right? We then take the joint reaction force, must be going from the tip of W to the tail of F. 
And here is some guesswork. Presume that uh, this is half the length of uh, a W. So then we, this is five and a half times W. That's our joint reaction force. To and then all you do is transfer that over to this side and you've got your joint reaction force there. Feel free to take a second piece of paper and use that as your ruler type thing if you really want to, but you don't need to be uh, very accurate here. What you're showing is the concept. You understand this concept, okay? Everyone, uh, if everyone's happy with that, and I'll take questions on the next session so we can come back to this, we'll just uh, er erase all of this and we'll start again now with a different concept. So I'm going to go to the more difficult ones. Um, by the way, on the uh, hip, I'm very sure that you can all uh, resolve this easily for um, I'm very sure you can all resolve easily that you can work out if the person is using a stick on the uh, opposite side of the hip, therefore that force is going up and therefore on the lever it's actually decreasing the joint reaction force overall because the abductors work less. The whole point is because the abductors are working so hard they are causing a massive joint reaction force. If we can take off the weight of the abductors we can then make, uh, we can decrease joint reaction force. We can come back to that in the next section. I just want to move on to a little bit more complicated ones, which people seem to always have a lot of trouble with. Um, with the ankle, what we'll do is, again, we'll use red as our primary color for anatomy. Okay, so with the ankle, people tend to draw the ankle as a flat uh, situation. I don't. What I do is I tell the examiner straight away that I am drawing the person standing on tiptoe. Okay, the, if that's the person standing on tiptoe, this is the ground. And if that is the case, this is the, the ankle is here. This is the ankle, correct? So, if you remember Newton's uh, third law, this patient is in equi equilibrium. Uh, uh, he's balancing on his tiptoe. His entire weight is now going through the through the toes, touching the ground. For every action, there is an opposite, an, uh, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, if the body weight of the patient is going all the way through the tiptoes and down, let me just switch to pen and screen again. If that's W there must be an equal and opposite reaction. So therefore, there must be a ground reaction force equal and opposite on this patient because he, on this person, because he's balanced, okay? So GRF is going up, correct? Now, what is counteracting the force of the GRF washing to push this foot up is the uh, force of the uh, Achilles tendon. So if we draw the Achilles tendon as a large force, That's the force of the Achilles tendon. Now you can appreciate now we have the ankle as our fulcrum. Um, and this is now a simple type one lever. As opposed to what tends to happen is people try to put the center of gravity in an unusual place or put the patient on fa uh, flat foot and then you now have to engage tib and, to, and Achilles tendon in the balance process. Uh, and of course you're standing on a tripod as opposed to a single point. You've made life easier. You're now moving to a simple lever fulcrum. You've just turned the hip upside down. That's all you've done. Does that make sense? Okay, so now, once again, if we switch to blue to draw our moment arms, pretty sure you've all guessed what our moment arms are going to be. That's moment arm for the ground reaction force. And everyone, will, everyone kind of looks, well, it's not interacting with the ground reaction force. Yes, it is. If you just go and imagine this line continuing up, there's your react, ground reaction force. Remember, this is in line, in perpendicular to the line of direction of the force that you're measuring, okay? Your ground reaction force for the tendon Achilles is here. So your moment arm for your tendon Achilles is here. Now, if we again take the smaller line and take it as D, this must be 4D. Okay, 
So once again, resolving, what we get is f by d is equal to 4 d g r f. But since we know that g r f is w, all we have to then say is 4 w. f is equal to 4 w. Okay, now the next question they're going to ask you is, so the force going through 10 Achilles is four times W. The next question they're going to ask you is, can you resolve the, show us what the joint reaction force is. So if you take F as your uh, first line, you move it away to the side and go to here, F. Everyone agree that it's close to exactly the same size and line. Then from tail of, uh, from the tip of F, you add the tail of, Ground reaction force. So that's G R F, which we know is W, and this is four W. Then the there must because this is an equilibrium, there must be an equal and opposite reaction from the joint uh, with the joint reaction force. And all you have to do is add the tip of sorry from the tip of G R F down to the tail of F. Of force. The reason why I'm drawing them next to each other is because I'm for, if I draw them on top of each other you can't see what's going on but all I'm doing is drawing one line on top of the other. Does that make sense? And there's my GJRF, joint reaction force. And if you add these two, if this is W equals ground reaction force, what you get is equal to 5W. And then all you do is draw that here Now, of course, my paper is too small, but you can appreciate that that is my uh, joint reaction force, 5W. Okay. Everyone, I know there's no interaction at the moment. If you have questions, please uh, save them for later. I'm just going to go on to the, do we have time for us to go to the next topic? The next. I think, um, I think if you're going to start a new topic, um, better to leave it to the next block. Okay. We could allow if, time for questions um there have been some private questions sent to me in the minor issues but if anyone has any question and you want to talk and speak to shwan directly about it just raise your hand next to your name um on the list of kind of participants and i we could make you active so you can talk and speak to shwan or the other option is you could um, write your question down. So, so is anyone, on, on the, if you look like anyone has any question at the moment. Okay. Okay, should we, how many minutes is left on this session? We have, we have about just over five minutes. Okay, in that case, um, what I'll do is just quickly draw the hips while we have those five minutes. Okay. We draw the hip for one moment and we'll show you how to, that those hip, what you can do with the hip to try and show that how to decrease joint reaction force. Okay, very quick rudimentary drawing there. If the person takes a stick on his opposite hand, what we then have is a force going up in this direction. So this is, we call it S for stick. If a person is carrying a weight on the opposite hand, we have a bag on the opposite hand, that's P. All you then do is uh, sum up the situation. So if this is D, this is, we said 5D, this must be another 5D between the weight and thing. So what to just resolve for this area, sorry, just to resolve for the stick in the hand, what we can do is FD is equal to 5DW uh, plus um, 
10 D S. Does that make sense? So then if we take away the D's, we have five equal to five W plus 10 S. Now you can see that the force required for the abductors is going to need, uh, sorry, minus S, my apologies. That should have been minus from the beginning. Did I just erase everything? Oh, we've run out of time. Okay, we're, sorry. Just one second, there, we haven't run out of time. Sorry, I thought it just snapped there, apologize. Um, that should be a minus. Um, because if you can see, S is going in the opposite direction of W. So therefore, it's pushing up the C, so on the W side, pushing up the lever on W side. So that should be a minus. So F plus 10S, because we now move it over to the other side, is equal to 5W. And as you can see, that uh, WF is now need, needs to be much smaller in size. So the reality is what we then do is we make the vector much smaller. You don't need to draw all this out. You just say the stick on the opposite side, and this is the reason why, because the force will go in the opposite direction of the weight. Some of the weight is now supported by the stick. Therefore, the forces of the abductors are decreased. Uh, therefore, overall, the joint reaction force will decrease because there's less force going through the joint in the, the, because F is much smaller. It's the same with the bag on the other side. You just have to say that because the patient is carrying the weight on the other side, the abductors don't need to work so hard to keep the patient balanced. Therefore, they're much smaller forces. Therefore, there's less joint reaction force. I know it's counterintuitive because the patient is carrying more weight. But what, the, what you have to remember is at that moment when that patient is standing on one leg on that hip, this is not... Uh, a situation where all weight is going through the hip. It's the situation where the forces are being balanced uh, on a seesaw between the two. And therefore, if you can make the seesaw more balanced on one side or the other, you decrease the forces uh, going through the hip by decreasing the abductor force. Okay? That's, that's wonderful, Shuan. Thank you very much for all the efforts you put so far. We will, guys, everyone, we will have a break of five minutes. So you can um, relax and stretch. I will send another link through the WhatsApp group to join the next uh, session, next block, where Shwan is going to tell us all about the rest of the more tricky joints and the more in details uh, explanation of um, free body diagram of different joints. And uh, we'll also, um, we really need to have questions and comments from you mainly to know that everything is clear, to know your views, to have the reaction from you, just to know how things are, you know, how you're getting on. Uh, so we need to have your comments and questions, please. So um, that will help us a lot to proceed with the session today. So um, I will log off now, end the meeting, and I will send you another link. You have five minutes to, for everyone to have a break. See you, see you in five minutes.